Hi, welcome to Critical Thinking for Ecosystem Science. I'm Dr. Tom Stolgren. This is the introduction, and it's based uh, loosely on Chicken Vaughn's textbook, Chapters 1 and 2. What is uncritical thinking? Well, do you know it when you see it? Now, here's a famous actress, Shirley MacLaine, who says, I think that we are all creating our own reality. I think I'm creating you right here. I'm creating everything. That's a pretty hefty claim. In her new book, I'm All Over That, Shirley MacLaine shares her thoughts on reincarnation and reveals several past lives she believes she's had. Let's think about past lives for a moment. What were you in a previous life? Most people respond, I was a princess or a king or some sort of royalty or an inventor or somebody very famous. Very few of us imagine ourselves as a village idiot. Why is that? Here's a weird sampler from Chicken Vaughn about what people in the United States believe. 55% believe in psychic or spiritual healing. 41% believe in extrasensory perception, ESP. 42% believe that we can be possessed by the devil. 32% believe in ghosts or spirits. 31% believe we can communicate with just our minds, telepathy. 24% believe extraterrestrial beings have visited Earth. Ooh, they didn't leave any garbage. And 26% believe in clairvoyance. A large, larger number than we might imagine believe in communicating with the dead, witches, astrology, and reincarnation. This is what people believe. Well, let's think about what's possible and what's impossible. ESP, extrasensory perception, is certainly possible. It's just that it hasn't been demonstrated yet. And with every failed test, the likelihood seems even more or less likely about the Loch Ness Monster and Bigfoot. We'll talk about those in a little while. And think about the predictions of the end of the world. Were you all worried in 2012? Well, how about this one from 2011? Or the ones from 2008, 2006, 1990, 1957, and so on, back in time. We've made a lot of predictions about the end of the world, at least some people. And, well, they haven't proven correctly yet. In this class, we'll be discussing the scientific method, how to gather information and evidence to support a claim. We'll make careful observations. We'll think about hypotheses and hypothesis testing. We'll think about experiments and looking at data, real evidence. We'll understand what it means to do a kind of analysis and to support or reject a hypothesis. And then if those don't work, we'll create a new hypothesis or a new experiment. The scientific method is self-correcting. It's the way to learn from evidence over time. Think about how long bad ideas stick around. In a philosophy of science class I taught a few years ago, I brought up the flat earth. There was no question in anybody's mind that the earth was flat held up in four corners by angels or guarded by dragons or demons, you sail off into the edge of the world and fall off. It's hard to imagine that the last president of the International Flat Earth Society died in 2001. Boy, those are bad ideas hanging around for a long time. Well, there's a big drought in California. Why don't we just call in the rainmakers like we would in Texas in 1890? Let's try yelling up at the sky in hopes that it'll make it rain. Now, this was just an experiment, really, not an uncostly one. They went out and they tested this. They thought it would cause rain, and it didn't. But they learned from their failed experiment. But not everybody learned. As late as 2010, they were discussing ways to increase snow amounts and rain amounts around Mount Shasta in California. Well, it would be big business if they could make it snow and the snow would stick around. That water's worth a lot of money. So maybe if they spread silver iodide or shot it up in the sky or sailed it out in airplanes, that they could make it rain. 2010. But a National Academy of Sciences report that looked at several... Uh, Three decades of cloud seeding experiments showed 
there was not a single bit of evidence that proved the effectiveness of cloud seeding. That won't stop others from trying. Tarot cards, oracle cards, cards that predict the future are big business. We spend a lot of money on them as a society. In fact, there are lots of ways to read the future. We have been inundated with techniques, with playing cards, tea leaves, crystal ball, tarot cards, Ouija boards, bumps on the head, a horoscope, palm reading, psychic readings, grounds in Greek coffee, brain scans, trances, runes, ancient alphabets, clairvoyance, necromancy, uh, communicating with the dead, or birth charts. We are totally infatuated with discovering our own future before it happens. Hmm, is that even possible? How do you evaluate such claims? How do things last such a long time in our history? But they do. And there are several, way too many techniques to tell you all about in detail. And you don't have to know these for the test. Think about studying your cat very carefully, though, because your cat's behavior can help predict your own. What do you think? How do you evaluate these claims and other scientific claims with confidence? Oh, there's plenty more ways to tell your future, including uh, checking to see what your urine looks like in the morning. It may foretell just how you're going to do the rest of the day. I haven't tried this yet, but yeah, I'm thinking about it. Take a look at these just for a laugh. I think it's kind of funny, but some people do believe in them. Okay. This was another device on that uh, Sky Mall magazine, the telekinetic obstacle course. Now, I tried to buy that for uh, my philosophy of science class, and this is, uh, of course, the people in the office said no. Uh, $99.95, and I can attach this thing to my head, and I can move this ball around an obstacle course using just my mind. Uh, well, I'm not sure that really works. How about pseudoscience? When we try to make things sound scientific, we push products this way all the time. Here's the scientific evidence that shows Chesterfield is a great cigarette, and that Lucky Strikes are milder than the others. And there's great evidence on the effects of smoking. Well, it's maybe not so bad as you thought. And after all, we have movie stars and singers selling us this stuff. What's not to believe? Evolution, one of our basic constructs in biology. Yet so few Americans, less than about 32%, believe in evolution. So there's also the evolution of the morons, as this joke says. It's very important to move ideas through time that are successful, that are validated with evidence. Here's the story. 87% of scientists believe in evolution, but only 32% of the public. So even if we find a way to think claims through, we may not be getting that information out to the public in very effective ways. So that's the challenge for this class, to know what's scientific and what's non-scientific, science from non-science. We might think that astrology or the idea of a flat earth or young earth creationism is completely bogus. But unless we prove things with science, geology, astronomy, chemistry, physics, biology, and medicine, we won't get very far. We need evidence to support claims. And that's what we'll learn to do. Think things through, look for evidence, and we'll apply these things later to ecosystem science. Thanks.